I'm reading today from the appendix to this book, The New God Image, by Edward Edinger. This is a letter to the Reverend David Cox by C.G. Jung, dated September 25th, 1957. Page 188. When theology makes metaphysical assertions, the conscience of the scientist cannot back it up. Since Christ never meant more to me than what I could understand of him, and since this understanding coincides with my empirical knowledge of the self, I have to admit that I mean the self in dealing with the idea of Christ. As a matter of fact, I have no other access to Christ but the self, and since I do not know anything beyond the self, I cling to his archetype. I say, here is the living and perceptible archetype which has been projected upon the man Jesus or has historically manifested itself in him. If this collective archetype had not been associated with Jesus, he would have remained a nameless ascetic. I actually prefer the term self because I am talking to Hindus as well as Christians, and I do not want to divide but to unite. I must confess that I cannot detach a certain feeling of dishonesty from any metaphysical assertion. One may speculate, but not assert. One cannot reach beyond oneself, and if somebody assures you he can reach beyond himself and his natural limitations, he overreaches himself and becomes immodest and untrue. Continuing on on page 189, Science is an honest-to-God attempt to get at the truth, and its rule is never to assert more than one can prove within reasonable and defensible limits. This is my attitude in approaching the problem of religious experience. I am unable to envision anything beyond the self, since it is by definition a borderline concept designating the unknown totality of man there are no known limits to the unconscious. There is no reason whatsoever why we should or should not call the beyond self Christ, or Buddha, or Purusha, or Tao, or Kitter, or Tefereth. All of these terms are recognizable formulations of what I call the self. Moreover, I dislike the insistence upon a special name since my human brethren are as good and as valid as I am. Why should their name giving be less valid than mine? It is not easy for a layman to get the desired theological information because even the church is not at one with herself in this respect. Who represents authentic Christianity? Thus the layman, whether he likes it or not, has to quote Protestant or Catholic statements pell-mell as Christian views because they are backed up by some authority. In my case, I believe I have been careful in quoting my sources. You, as a theologian, are naturally interested in the best possible view or explanation, while the psychologist is interested in all sorts of opinions because he wants to acquire some understanding of mental phenomenology and cares little for even the best possible metaphysical assertion, which is beyond human reach anyhow. The various creeds are just so many phenomena to him, and he has no means of deciding about the truth or the ultimate validity of any metaphysical statement. I cannot select the best or the ultimate opinions because I do not know which kind of opinion to choose from which church. Also, I do not care particularly where such opinions come from, and it is quite beyond my capacity to find out whether they are erroneous or not.